One thing to be aware of is, is um, anisotropy of the needle itself. As your needle, if your tissue may look beautiful because it's perfectly perpendicular to your beam, um, but as your needle comes in and it comes down into the tissue, it will re reflect some of those beams away. So that needle may or may not be totally visible to you. If it's at a very steep angle, it's going to reflect all those beams totally away from your transducer, and your needle will be hypoechoic. So you may see a, a dark line in your tissue. If the needle is at 45 degrees or less, so if it's more parallel to your transducer, it's going to be much brighter and you'll be able to visualize it. So um, planning ahead can help you tremendously with this. Um, when in doubt, if you're not sure what it is that, that's deep, if you're not sure if it's a ganglion, you know, could it be a nerve cyst? If you're not sure if it's a trigger point, you know, could it be a sarcoma? Leave it alone. So when in doubt, don't inject it. When, when unsure, you know, leave it. And practice. And it's really the only way to do it. Um, you know, in our practice, we, we brought in um, uh, chicken, and uh, we placed little things in the chicken. We thought it was a great way to practice. It was terrific. Um, some of them had, uh, we got like uh, bubble wrap, and we cut the chicken in half and put bubble wrap inside of it, laid the chicken back down, put it in a plastic bag, and then scanned on top of the chicken and, and then injected into the, into the bubble wrap through the chicken. Um, also put in little tiny balloons full of um, water uh, and little tiny balloons full of like this little clay material and practiced injecting those things. So um, I would encourage you to do that. Um, it's, a, it's a little cheaper to do that than get a blue phantom, which, are, which can also be helpful. Um, and you know, the more you do that ahead of time, the better you get at your manual skills of keeping the transducer directly on top of the needle. That's needle guidance.